raise money and awareness for um, Get the World Rid of Landmines. Yeah. And there'll be more about that later. But right now, uh, I want to bring out uh, a group of people who are very generously donated their time and talents to make this evening possible. So first up, please welcome Gillian Welch and David Rawlings. somebody who can play everything to come out and help me along. So please welcome Ethan Johns. <laughs> Ethan and I just got finished uh, with a, a tour with Linda Ronstadt. Yeah. And this is a song from, that we did just about every night, I guess. And we're going to do it again tonight. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
what's her name, wherever the hell she is. <laughs>
and jeans got up to play guitar and sing in some joint in Mission Beach last night. <laughs> At the door sat Tom Waits and a pork pie had the silver skates and he's juggling three collection plates. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Towns Van Zandt was standing at the bar and he was skinning a Hollywood movie star. And he can't remember where he parked his car or to whom he lost the keys. But he's full of angst and hillbilly haiku. What's a poor Fort Worth boy to do? Go on rhyme some for a man and show him how you really feel. There ain't no money in poetry. That's what says the poet free. I've had all the freedom I 
can say. You got the cold out swim, rainbow pie, all it takes to get me by. Fool my belly till the day I die. Cold out swim, rainbow Gettysburg Kerouac was shooting dice, playing Ramblin' Jack's guitar with a cowboy painting pit car on it. And they sat in the back and they drank for free and they rhymed orange with Rosalie. Now there's a pride of lines to draw to. Well, there ain't no money in poetry, and that's what says poetry. Without any top 
So I'm going to ask, I'm going to turn the microphone over to her now because we want to get as much on her as we can. <laughs> I feel like a complete schmo. You know, really, most, you know, just because I feel like a schmo, but but it's just been so wonderful to uh, be a part of this event. And uh, thanks, thanks for doing it. And on behalf of you. So I'm just going to play uh, two more songs and then and then uh, bolt. bolt. Um, a couple of years ago, I had the distinct uh, pleasure and privilege of, of touring with uh, Gillian and David for a whole summer, and uh, it was just a, a joy. And uh, this was a song that we did every night, and uh, so we're going to do it again. Uh, it's a John Cash song. Yeah. You know, small.
with the, the verse about I go out to a party and try to have some fun. That's my teenage life. <laughs> It's my adult life, too. <laughs> well, a couple of Christmas Eves ago, I, uh, I was in Bosnia. I uh, went there and uh, got to spend some time with the troops and, and uh, some really amazing children who uh, had lost their parents in the, in the war. And uh, it was a, a surreal experience to be flying into uh, Tuzla, on Christmas Eve afternoon and to look at this landscape where everything was destroyed. It was like a moonscape. There, were, there, was, there was nothing there. And uh, I really had never seen anything like that before. And um, being there that, that night uh, was uh, one of the most uh, humbling experiences of my life. And, and uh, you know, you, you, when, you, when you write songs, uh, I think you tend to expect that you're going to put your experiences in those songs. And, and I, I think I, I came away from, from that place assuming, or hoping, actually, that somehow I would be able to funnel my feelings into, into something I could write. Um, but time went on, and, and nothing really came, came from it. And, uh, and then a couple of months ago, I had an opportunity to, to uh, be part of a Christmas party. And uh, I had the chance to, I guess, write a carol. And as I started to, to write this song, those were the experiences I started thinking of. Um, uh, not so much the, the devastation and the losses, uh, the incredible losses, but rather the resilience of the people that I met. And uh, in the end, I, I was feeling very strongly that it wasn't about whether or not you choose to worship or what you worship. But rather, your resilience is, is what uh, makes you human, and that's what kind of binds us all together. So. <coughs> Yeah. 
these scars. Uh, these scars are very, very special. Uh, they're called kramas, and um, they're a traditional um, garment, a piece of fabric from Cambodia. And uh, traditionally, they're made of either, either cotton or silk. They're used to, um, you know, as a sash, as a belt to wrap around the head or carry babies, uh, all kinds of things. Um, and uh, I guess kind of like the song from Chapin's about the shirt, which I love so much. I love um, and these particular kromas are, are made by a group of women in Cambodia who are all landmine um, victims, they're all am amputees. And uh, they actually raise the silkworms, uh, you know, feed them the mulberry leaves and gather the silk and make the fabric and hand dye it and weave it, hand weave it into these beautiful scarves. Kind of puts Martha Stewart to shame. <laughs> Both her legs and both her hands. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, it's enabled these women to get alive, literally, because uh, it's a very difficult being an, an amputee in a country like Cambodia, especially if you are a woman. Uh, but there'll be more about that later. The reason I wanted to mention this is because I'm shamelessly uh, uh, asking you to, to purchase some of these when we take our 20 minute intermission. Um, they're, they're wonderful and they make great Christmas presents and I just wanted to tell you that uh, I have one. Gil <laughs> has one, Chapin has one. Now I'm ready to do a song. <laughs> I think I'm better at that than hawking products. <laughs> um, Guy Clark, um, Guy Clark, you can applaud. each other a long time, and uh, this is about what was it, two or three Christmases ago, um, I was over at his, uh, his wife Suzanne's house, and uh, when we were into the shank of the evening, he said, you need to write your next record, and I don't care if it takes you five years to do it. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take me to do it, but yes, sir, Mr. Clark, <laughs> I'm trying. So here's a new song. Last night I dreamed about you, I dreamed that you were older. You were looking like Picasso with a scar across your shoulder. You were kneeling by the bed. You were digging up the bodies buried long ago.
smells like being a neighbor. It's <laughs> what all kind of neighbors a bunch of us up here.
took off after dark It's a long way down a cannon road The night was black and the moon was low Down to where the black top highway starts I mean dance ten and ten I mean dance ten and ten I mean dance see what I can see Stuff that holds up The kind 
rest of you don't hang on the wall. Stuff that's real, stuff you feel, the kind of stuff you reach for when you fall. Just keep 
keeps on spinning This bunch of dancing fools They run crazy through the wilderness of this world They run crazy across the wilderness of this world Them off to follow you into the old. 
Michael Lynch and Vernon Brown. <laughs> might have been the best songwriter 
in the world. Um, after, uh, after Tan's dad, I, I went out and did the solo tour, and it took me to some places that I'd never been before, and uh, cause I didn't have to drag the band along, and, and uh, you know, I could go and play places for a little less money and go to some places just to see them. And, uh, Went to, it went, I started in Ireland and went as far east as Croatia and then came back to Ireland and camped out in Galway for like a month or well, actually two months and wrote most of the songs for El Corazon. And uh, one of those songs is this one. And when one of your teachers interprets your work, that's the greatest compliment that any kind of artist can be paid. And the guy just recorded this song. So.
is the word. Where will you be? Out on the lonesome plains of Texas, or the shores of the Galilee, when Jesus saves the world, which he will surely do. It don't matter where you are, he gonna bring his wrath on you.
I shouldn't have worn a skirt. <laughs> Just an observation.
have to I do have to say that we're living in that in a time when, in this country when we're spending a lot of money waging a war on drugs, but we're defunding treatment for drug addicts. And that makes But um, the very first thing that I wrote after I writing the report and I here's with this song. And when I got out, I went back to jail and uh, finished up my obligation there. And uh, then I started on a record. And I really, just for me, I needed to make a record as quickly as possible, mainly just to keep my ass out of trouble. And I didn't have enough songs for a whole record, so I went back to a bunch of older songs. And then I had about three or four new ones. And uh, I recorded this on a record called Train Coming. And that was early in January of, uh, of that year. And I think uh, I know exactly what they, Emmy recorded it because she was working on Wrecking Ball. And I went over to play guitar on it. And uh, it was my 40th birthday. And uh, believe me, uh, I came very close to not having a 40th birthday. I'm glad you're still here, Steve. Uh, I didn't know it when I wrote this, but this is basically a ninth step in the PSA.
from the Bible and God's only son The immaculate injection I am now the one Well, it wasn't from around here They was Judean strangers So they called up the front desk Said, let me talk to the manger There was horses, there was cows there was sheep, there was pigs. Mary asked Joseph, hey, who would this be? Ah, it's Exodus, only a scuff of Panama. Where shift is through the gifts, no Santa Claus, no wise men.
came very close to not being here. But when that happens to you, the upside is, is you start looking at things different. And when I took another look at things, what I discovered is that I've been right in the first place. The first time Guy heard this song, he said, man, you're getting militant in your old age. It's just that um, it's a lot of things that I always believed and I just kind of forgot about. Like, there is no excuse for anyone to go hungry in the richest country in the world. And killing anybody for any reason, no matter who you are, is wrong. People that just want to go out and work their fields and grow food shouldn't have to worry about getting blown up. Oh, hell broke loose in Seattle last week when we were starting this tour. And um, when the news first started coming down, especially the CNN USA Today, version of it, a lot of people were led to believe that there were riots going on in Seattle. What really happened is the most effective civil disobedience that's occurred in this country in a long, long time. And, you know, civil disobedience is always about making a point. It's like they stopped the first day of the conference and I'm, those guys probably got on their cell phones and did whatever they were going to do anyway. <laughs> and then that night, a bunch of kids tore a bunch of stuff up. But there were 50,000 people in the streets. I'm kind of glad they got Starbucks, though. <laughs> But I do, it being Seattle, you know, I'm sure. It is a felony to fuck up an espresso machine in Seattle. <laughs> One of my heroes got arrested up there, her name is Sherry Hunt Collins. She's the head of something called the Kensington Welfare Rights Union. Now, think about that, welfare rights. That means that everybody has a right to a roof over their head and enough to eat. decent medical care, a right. Sherry's always getting arrested. When I wrote this song, I was watching the election returns. I was kind of down, but uh, I started out, but by the time I got around to the chorus, thanks for looking up. It's Christmas time in Washington Democrats rehearse Getting in gear For four more years But things not getting worse Republicans drank whiskey knee Thank you, lucky stars. They said, Can I see another turn? There were no more FDRs. And I sat home in Tennessee, staring at the screen. And I'm easy beating in my chest. Wondering what it means. So come back, would it get to come back to us now? Terrorize this paradise, rise again somehow. If you run into Jesus. Maybe he can help us out 
Come back. 